What's up, folks? So you're currently looking at one of my renders I did recently. And as you can see, there's a lot of concrete in here. And I want to show my process and how I went about making this concrete. So this is the project file. And um, here's the concrete bits that are isolated. And oh, what I like about this method is that it's fully procedural. And you can just make any change. You can add and block out stuff really quickly and then everything will just work and look pretty good because it's actual geometry and you don't have to fake anything with like shaders and stuff so yeah let's talk about how this is built so i have a little bit of an an excerpt from that file in terms of this concrete column so this method is divided into these four parts the first one is optional. It's it's a Boolean thing. If you want to uh, model using Booleans, that's great. And just make sure that's your, your first part of the stack. And then you have a remesh, so you can get a, uh, like a nice homogeneous topology. Um, so everything will be displaced equally. And then we have our first disp uh, like displacement uh, geometry node bit, where like all of the displacement happens. And then the last part is just a nice instancing, a nice particle system. As you can see in this, you have a bit of like shimmery parts that are more, that stand out. That's basically that. Um, yeah, so let's try to recreate this from scratch. Start with a cube. And maybe we should just model a bit of a fun geometry. What about this? And yeah, if you want to have a boolean thing going on let's add that too all right there we go so first part is always to apply your scale it's a good thing to have in, in your routines all right so let's start by remeshing this and we want to have a lot of geometry and this is what's also nice about this method you can change your voxel size and basically then your resolution um so i think 0 0.005 is pretty good it will give us a lot of junk. Okay, you can see the density here is quite quite a bit. So let's uh, bring this back. All right, so let's add our first geometry nodes bit. And um, so this method is structured into two parts. The first one is going to be a set position where we're going to do a bit of displacement based on image maps and some noise. And then we're going to have a second displacement which is just going to be noise. Um, so show this stuff here. I can, you can see that this is how straight it is with the displacement and then without, it's a bit more straight. So this just adds a subtle, very large curvature of, uh, of the concrete. I don't know if this is actually realistic, but I like to just um, avoid very, very sharp angles and stuff. So that's that. Great. So yeah, let's start with this displacement. All right. So we're going to start with an image texture and we're actually going to use two in total. And this first one is, uh, let's see if I can remember. It was ambient occlusion. So it was this one. It's actually not a displacement texture, but you can use it as such. And I found this on Quixel Bridge. If we just put this in our offset here, it's going to look real whack. Um, that's because of two reasons. The first one is that this is displacing everything in this one general direction, which we don't want. We want it to be displaced based on the angles of the material. So we're going to do that using a normal and we're going to multiply these together using a multiply. All right. So now everything is going to be displaced outward and we still have well, two problems. The first one is it's too much. So we're just going to decrease the amount. But you can also see that this stuff is not unwrapped. We want it to be pointing outwards uh, as if you did a triplanar projection. So the only method I could find was um, in this Blender stack exchange thing. This guy called Zebrahead just uh, made a box mapping node. So I'll link this, but uh, it's, it's quite great. So just add that. And if we plug that into the vector, you'll see that it just does box mapping. So 
yeah, solves every problem. And what's nice about this is that you can then plug this into your geometry and then use this variable for your image textures when you're shading this stuff later. So yeah, this is super great. Um, I think I increased the scale too. So everything's a bit smaller. All right, so let's um, add our second texture because the problem with just using this one texture is that if I just extend this a bit, we'll see a bit of repetition. So by mixing two textures together, we will sort of eliminate that a little bit at least. The second texture was, let's see if I can remember uh, what it was. Um, I think it was this stuff right here. So let's plug in our UVs and we're gonna mix these together like so. Now, the problem with just mixing two images, like, so they overlap each other, we're still going to get, um, like, a, a pattern, or it's not going to be seamless. So I always use a noise texture in these cases, so they get mixed procedurally or non-repetitively. I'm just going to use a, yeah, here we can see it a bit clearer. Now, we have a bit of a... A problem here because if we look at one of these the amplitude is really low and on the other one it's quite high so we were we're going to use a color ramp for each of these and tweak them accordingly so if i remember correctly i did something like like this for our first one just toning it down a little bit and making it more adding the contrast and on this one i flipped it I don't know why. Like, I just sat around and was tweaking all this stuff for, like, uh, a couple of minutes. And then I found something that that worked. Um, great. So if we plug this in here, our noise is obviously too large or too small. And I added a bit of roughness and detail. But I think I had something like this. And we're, like, basically done. And, um, oh, yeah. For some reason, it looked better when I flipped this stuff. So I think I had it like like this. And yeah, that's basically our, um, our concrete uh, displacement. Now, if you wanna have a bit more realism, you could also use a noise texture like this. And uh, let's just uh, use a combine X, Y, Z, Y, Z. So we can control which directions are getting displaced. Um, so just make this scale like really large so it just looks like it has been deformed and uh, yeah like that and i'm going to use a, um, a vector map to control the amplitude wait why is this not working this should be equal to zero. Oh, it's add my bad so um, what about 0 0.2 we'll start off with that maybe it's too intense and we can actually move this here. So I'm just gonna duplicate this three times. And the reason for this, okay, this is a lot of displacement. I'll tune it down even more like so. And if we make these 4D, you can change the offsets. So everything's like randomized, great. I mean, the changes are going to be quite subtle, but you can see it uh, just makes it a little more natural. All right, so um, that's basically our displacement which is uh, sort of 90 percent of the thing so if we look at this in our rendered view then we'll change to aces it looks all right and now if you want to um, do some shader stuff uh, let's plug in this image texture and we'll match let's see was it this one albedo so as i mentioned earlier we want to have a uv input for this stuff because now everything is just gray everywhere which is not very realistic all right, so what you do is you take the vector here, which is essentially a UV map, and then you just plug it in here and we can call this whatever we want, maybe UV map in this case. And if we go to our shader editor, um, we can just reference this attribute here. All right, great. And let's look at this, brilliant. And hopefully we can see that this matches our texture. Um, Maybe we should hide this guy. Yeah, so now you can use this um, this UV uh, for all of your like textures and everything will line up. So 
Yeah, and if you want to do that last part, you can either use a particle system or another geometry nodes. Um, and in that case, I think you do a distribute points on faces. So we have a bit of bit of points to work with. And then you do a instance on points. And uh, let's just bring in a uh, an object here. And in this case, we're gonna reference our rock pool. And um, you can also use a random value to uh, control the rotation of these guys. You can also use that for, for the scale. And if I am correct, you should use a combine XYZ here. So it scales everything uniformly. So um, let's just decrease our scale a bit, maybe like this. Yeah. And uh, what you do now is you just join this together with your original geometry. And that's great. And you can change your de density if you want. And yeah, if you just increase your voxel size, stuff's going to look better. And for those who are interested, I'll also put this scene file up on Patreon. All right. Have a good one, folks.